Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into one more most frequently asked solidity programming question. And the question is, we have to find out the second largest element from the given array. In this particular video, we'll be looking at different concepts that are present inside solidity language with respect to arrays. How we can tackle with arrays. So basically for finding out the second largest element, there are multiple ways. First thing that you can do is you can sort the array in ascending order and then you can access the second last element. But we are not going to follow that particular way. Instead, we are going to look into a different way. So without further delay, let's start. So as we know, in solidity, we have to write these two lines of code. That is the pragma directive and the license identifier. So once we do that, we have to create the contract and the name of this particular contract. Let's take it as second largest. And inside this, we'll be declaring a function. The name of the function would be find second largest element. So let's try. It. So we will try to make this particular code dynamic. That means the user will put the array and will be finding out the second largest element from that particular array. So for doing that, we have to pass on the parameter inside this particular function. So the parameter type is uint, that is unsigned integer. Now, since we are going to declare an array, so we'll write square brackets. After that, we'll be writing memory. Since we are declaring array of unsigned integers, that we have, that is why we have to write memory. After that, we are going to write the name of the array, that is arr. Once we do that, next we have to mention the access specifier, that is public. Next, we will be writing pure keyword. Now, in the previous video, I have told you what is the significance of view keyword. Now, let's see pure keyword. So, basically, pure keyword is used when you don't want to access the contract storage. You can see in this particular contract, we don't have any state variables declared in this particular contract. So, that is why there is no need for accessing it. And that is why we can write pure keyword. After that, we'll be simply writing the returns keyword. And we are going to return the second largest element from the array input. So that is why it is going to be of the type integer, unsigned integer. So we'll write uint inside it. And now let's try to write the body of the function. Now you can put validations also. If a user put array of length lesser than two, then in that particular case, we won't be able to find out second largest element because there will be only one or there will be no element inside the array. So that is why we can put some validation. And for that, we can use require function. Require function is just to ensure whether a particular condition is satisfied. So over here inside this, we have to write the condition. So condition can be written something like this. ARR, that is the array variable dot length. So it will calculate the length automatically. And we just have to make sure that it has to be greater than two. Now, whenever it checks, if this particular condition satisfies, then, then it will be happy. It will allow the control to go forward. But if this particular condition doesn't satisfy, then it will throw the message. Now, message can be defined by us. So here we'll write array length must be greater than two. You can write your own custom message. Now, once you do that, next we have to write the body of the function. So the very first thing we are going to do is to define two variables. First is the largest variable. So let's define it unsigned largest and we'll give it the value of the zeroth location element that is present inside the array at the zeroth location so we'll do that after that we'll also define one more variable and the name of the variable will be second largest and this time we are going to give it a value of the element that is located at the first location inside the array now once we are done with this particular two variables, these variables will store the largest and second largest element value respectively. Now let's say we have this particular array 10, 2, 3 and 1. Now in this particular case, we are going to assign the largest variable with the value 10 and the second largest variable with the value 2. Now in this particular case, between these two, yes, 10 is the largest value. But if the case is something like this, 2 and 10. Then in this particular case, the element 2 will be assigned 
to the variable largest and the element 10 will be assigned to the variable second largest. So that is why first we'll have to mutually compare in between these two variables, which is largest. And then we have to make the element with the largest value in the largest variable and element with the second largest value in the second largest variable. So first we have to compare between these two. So we'll use if condition. We'll write if the second largest element is greater than the largest element. Then in that particular case, what we need to do, we'll have to swap them. Now swapping is again one more concept which you will learn in this particular video with respect to solidity language. So over here, for swapping, these two values present inside these two variables will be using a temporary variable. So we'll assign a new variable named as temp with the value with the data type and send integer. And then we'll assign the value of the second largest variable to this temporary variable. Now, the second largest variable is empty. So now we can assign the largest variable value to the second largest element. Do you want to check out this attractive funny memes? Then what are you waiting for? These are just a glimpse of the memes that I've created on my Instagram page. You can find the link to my Instagram handle in the description box. Please visit the link and do watch all these interesting funny memes. These are not just memes. These memes and reels contain technical information. Here, I try to relate memes with the technological concepts. So, please do appreciate that by watching all those. And if you love it, please hit the follow button. And finally, we will be writing largest equal to 10. Whatever value is stored inside temporary variable, that is the second largest value, will now be stored inside the largest variable. So we have successfully swapped these two variable values. Now, once we are done till this particular point, we are now going to use for loop. So we'll iterate over all the elements inside the array. So over here, we will uh, we'll declare a new variable, uint i equals to zero. We'll start with the very first position in the array. We'll move till it reaches the last element that is accessed by array dot length. Now, after this, we will increment the i value after every single iteration. Now, inside this, we'll check whether the current element inside the array, that is nothing but array of i, is greater than the largest element. We have to put it in round brackets. And if this is occurring, that means this particular case where the current element is greater than the largest element, then now we have to perform two things. The very first is that we have to change the value of second largest element that will now become the value that is present inside the largest variable. So we'll write that. The second largest variable value will now have the value of the largest element. And now since the current element is the new largest element, so that is why this largest variable value will be updated with the current element's value, that is array of i. So this we have to write inside the if clause. Now, if this is not the case, that means if the current element's value is not greater than the largest element value, then in that case, we have to compare the current element's value with the second largest element value. The second case will be something like this, where the current element is not greater than the largest element, but it is greater than the second largest element. So that is why we have to assign this particular current element's value as now the second largest element's value, which can be done by simply writing second largest equal to current element's value. So let's do that. So for that, we will have to write else if condition. Now inside this, we'll specify what we have to check. In this particular case, we will check that if the array of i, that is the current element's value is greater than the second largest element's value. And we'll also check that the current element's value is not equal to the largest element value. So this is what we'll be checking inside this else if clause. And if this becomes true, then in that case, what we'll do, we'll simply assign the current element's value to the second largest element value, something like this. So I hope this particular simple code is clear to you all. Okay, so there is a mistake. We have to mention 
this particular else if statement after the if statement inside the for loop only. So let's do that. And now we are done with the code. Now after this, we will simply return the value of the second largest element that we want. So let's do that. So till now we have written the entire code. Let's check whether we are missing anything or we have done anything wrong. So for you entire. Okay. So over here, I think I done one mistake. Instead of writing greater than, we have to write lesser than two because we are going to make sure that it won't exceed the length of the array. It has to be always lesser than the length of the array. So that is why uh, we'll write lesser than sign. And now I think we are done. Let's now deploy this particular contract and let's check whether we get the correct results or not. So here we have deployed our contract and let's try to test one simple array. Over here, I'll write 10, 2, 3, 1, 78 and 199. So you can see by looking at this, 199 is the largest element and 78 is the second largest element. Let's try to test it. Yes, over here you can see 78 is the value that we have got from this particular pool. So let's test for some other values also. So let's try to check. Over here you can see 454 is the second largest element, which is true because the largest is this. So I hope this particular code is clear to you all. I have tried to clear all your concepts that are required for building this particular logic. So if you like this particular video, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Please join me on Telegram and thanks for watching. Have a good day ahead.